Hello, who are you? What do you do? I'm Shai Gassi. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Better Place. Okay, Better Place is always quite confusing for Germans because we have another startup called Better Place. What is your Better Place about? Well, we're not about philanthropy. These, the uh, other Better Place are, uh, are good guys worrying about uh, funding and funneling philanthropy money. Better Place is going to end oil. So we're, uh, we're about uh, f a platform to actually uh, enable electric cars to become cheaper and more convenient than gasoline cars. And, uh, and do so in a way that will uh, transform the desire of the market from going uh, on gasoline to going on electric. Are electric cars like right now ready to you know, um, get rid of oil? Does it, does it work? Because from what I hear, a battery is quite a problem. Well, it's, there are a lot of myths around electric cars. The reality is that batteries today are good enough to uh, give you a great car experience. It's actually a very fast car. Uh, fast means? Uh, you go from uh, um, zero to 60 about um, so sub 10 seconds. You go from uh, sort of the passing experience, the 50 to 80 and in, uh, in 80 to 110, about twice faster than you do with a gasoline car. Um, and the main reason is you get maximum torque. So when you press the pedal, you're immediately at the top performance of the, the motor. You don't, have, you don't need gears to sort of get your, your motor to the, your engine to the top of the, the curve. Um, and then what we've done is we've created a, a mechanism in which those batteries can also can be both recharged when you park your car and you go to sleep and switched when you're on the autobahn and you want to continue to go so, and, and so you get the benefit of both which makes the number of stops you will have in order to uh, charge your car just properly charge your car less than a number of times you stop to fill your car with gasoline Okay, um, I see myself as a fan of the environment too, but how much does it cost to buy such a car and to run it? So our premise was that uh, this will not happen unless the cost of a gasoline car would be higher than the cost of an electric car. So electric cars are actually cheaper in the markets where we're coming into than the gasoline equivalency by about three to 5,000 euros. Which markets are you going in? So the first markets are Israel, Denmark and Australia. Why? Israel, uh, because it's a transportation island, it's it's actually easy to uh, do um, sort of a big big experiment if you want. Uh, Denmark, because it's uh, it's a very green environment, um, both regulation and the availability of uh, clean electrons is there. In Australia, because everybody said we can only do small countries, and so we picked a big island. Okay, that's cool. Um, is Better Place really selling these cars, or how exactly does Better Place work? So you think of us, we're replacing what the gas stations do. We sell the kilometers, we don't sell the car. Mm -hmm. The car makers still sell the car, and we sell a, uh, a contract for the kilometers, much like you'd buy a gasoline card for, uh, for a company in, uh, in Germany. Sounds expensive. Actually, we sell the kilometers at the same cost as gasoline. I mean, the, 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 the whole business sounds expensive. Uh, the cost of our network to set it up, um, our cost to set up the network in any country, in Israel, in Germany, in France, is less than one week of gasoline for the country. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. That's very cheap, huh? Mm -hmm. Now that you think about it that way, it's very cheap. Israel, Israel consumes $25 million dollars of gasoline every day. Our whole network is $150 million. dollars. So if, if you think of a place like Holland, which are very dense, Our cost of the network for Holland is one day of gasoline. Okay, that's It's fairly pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us a bit about your past. I mean, as far as I know, you're some kind of SAP guru. <laughs> I, uh, I started as, as, a, uh, as an entrepreneur. I built four companies, and we ended up selling uh, uh, two companies to SAP. One was mine, the other one was my father's. Um, and then within SAP, I ran a number of organizations, finally ending up being the president of all products and technology in SAP and uh, was supposed to be the next CEO and then uh, I did I wrote a white paper for the World Economic Forum in Davos on how to run a country without oil and uh, and that white paper was picked up by the president of Israel who challenged me to actually go do it and I quit SAP and I started this company um, most people called me crazy but you know, here we are we're changing the world Yeah, I was just about to say, um, to get this right, you were supposed to be the CEO of SAP, one of the biggest software companies in the world, and instead chose to um, help the environment? Well, it's, it's more than helping the environment. I think that there's a, there's a bigger problem with oil that we're now realizing. Oil is not just destroying the environment. It's destroying the economies in the world. As, as somebody said, 
when the oil companies die, nobody will come for the funeral. Um, and so we know today that, um, that the way we consume oil, and in particular for cars, is not sustainable. And yet none of us will give up their cars. I mean, it's, a car is part of our freedom. It's part of, of who we are. It's part of our brand. It's an, it's an emotional uh, purchase. Um, so my view was you have to find a way to continue to drive without, uh, without losing everything else. And, and that, was the, that was the motivation. It's a, it's, a, it's a much bigger question to solve than another version of SAP. And, and pardon my friends at SAP, I'm no disrespect, but um, it's just a bigger cause. I mean, um, I would respect it too if I were your friend at SAP, I guess, because it sounds pretty altruistic, but I guess there's a business case behind it also, right? I didn't start it as a business. It, originally, um, I wrote it as a white paper to start a government agency. And I expected some government to pick it up as a government agency. And I don't think anybody has ever created a business plan that was predicated on building government agency and taking government salary. And so um, for those who blame me to sort of trying to do something for my own self, it's, uh, it's not a smart business plan to start that way. The reason we did it as a private enterprise uh, was that the Prime Minister of Israel said that a government is not a venture uh, company. So, so he wasn't a venture capitalist and we needed $200 million. And he said, well, you go find the money yourself. $200 million. Uh, we, since then we raised $700 million. So it's the, one of the most well-funded, well-capitalized private companies in history. Who has such deep pockets? Um, the largest investor is, a, uh, is, a, is the largest holding company in Israel, Israel Corporation. It's a private company that uh, um, holds refineries on the one hand and drill ships on the other hand and a Chinese car company and an investment in us. Um, but also some of the largest banks in the world. HSBC um, invested more than $100 million in the company. Uh, Morgan Stanley invested more than $100 million in the company. We've got local partners in Denmark, uh, the oil company of Denmark, the uh, utility of Denmark, the, uh, the one of the largest utilities in Australia. I mean, it's everywhere. Well, yeah, it seems that they see it as some kind of, you know, so social responsibility opportunity. Actually, they see it as a good business. Okay. Interesting. Um, if you compare Israel to Europe and the U.S., what is the difference from a venture perspective? Um, I think in, Isra in, in the U.S. it's okay to fail, in Israel it's expected to fail, and in Europe it's, un it's unacceptable to fail. And I think the, um, that changes, to a certain degree, the psyche of the entrepreneur. Um, very, very, f very few people in Germany finish their uh, PhD in, uh, in Potsdam or in, uh, in Frankfurt or in Munich and say, okay, I'm going to go start a company because they're, they're afraid of the stigma that was associated with failing. Uh, in Israel, if you've only worked at large established companies and you've never st gone into a startup, you have a stigma of a guy who's, uh, who's probably not good enough. <laughs> okay, that's a really interesting perspective. Well, cool then. Um, I, s I think you have a slot right now speaking. Um, thanks a lot and good luck, of course, with Better Place. Thank you very much.